British Army have got the Lewis gun. It's probably the best of the World War I great machine gun, black machine guns, and that stays in service after the war because there's a lot of legacy guns. However, they are starting to wear out. The Army does also want something a bit simpler and a bit lighter. So in 1930, the small arms community starts searching for a replacement. Now they want a replacement both for Lewis in the light automatic role and for the sustained fire water cooled Vickers gun. So that's really quite a big requirement. They test quite a number of guns. Um, one gun emerges as a favourite quite early, which is the Czech ZV26 in 7.92mm Mauser. They do some work with that. Hold an improved version of ZB30. They have that converted to 303. Again, the converted gun tests really well. It's by far their favourite. And in 1935, they adopt that as the Bren gun. So this is your Bren here. They start building a factory at Enfield. The first Bren guns appear in 1937. By the start of World War II, they produced about 30,000 of them. Logically enough, you put those 30,000 guns to the people most likely to go into action, which means most of them go to France with the British Expeditionary Force, and functionally all of those are lost in the retreats to Dunkirk in 1940. We're left with about 2,000 rain guns in the entire country, so This is the Mark I. Because you need to make up the losses of weapons at Dunkirk, you can also produce more guns to equip the expansion of the army. You then produce the Mark I modified. Same basic still design as the Mark I. You do less finesse, like you machine away less of the metal to reduce weight. You also go through a more thorough redesign process to produce the Mark II. Now the Mark II is simplified for mass production. So for example, this complicated style sight here is replaced by the much simpler ladder back sight on this. Um, you put on a number of simplifications. So the folding cocking handle of Mark I is replaced with a fixed cocking handle here. Bipod is simplified and so on and so forth. Altogether, those changes knock about 20 to 25 percent off production time. So that is quite a significant improvement. Um, the Mark, Mark II comes into service from about 1941. The majority of guns produced, you produce about 500,000 brand guns during the war. 90 percent of those are either Mark I modified or Mark II. You do also produce a Mark III, which is a lightning version. This is a Mark II, but oddly has a Mark III barrel on it. The Mark III barrel is shorter and lighter. You produce about 50,000 Mark III Bren guns. You produce the Mark IV, which is another short lightened one, but you only produce about 250 of those. So really, that's a very rare weapon to encounter. Enfield in England is the main producer. That produces about half the 500,000 produced. You'll see here this one is produced by Inglis in Canada. Inglis, we set up a production line in 1938 with the first weapons coming off that production line in 1940. Inglis produces about 186,000 Bren guns for the Commonwealth. So that's really the second big producer. Lithgow in Australia, that produces some Bren guns. We produce about 17,000 there, so that's really quite an unusual thing if you get in Australia and make a Bren gun. Finally, Ishapur in India, the plant that has been producing Vickers Berthiers, that actually switches over to producing Bren guns from 1942. They actually carry on producing Brens even after the war. They produce them for the Indian Army and they produce their last ones in 7.62mm calibre. The Bren carries on in 303 after the war through Korea. It's only really when we change over to the 7.62 NATO cartridge to standardise with NATO in the late 1950s 
So you do convert to some of these brands to 7.62, but we will talk about that in a future video. What we're going to look at now is we're going to look at the essential features of the brand gun. Now, looking at this gun, then the Vickers gun at that point is still in service. Vickers is recoil operated. Like the Lewis gun that replaced that preceded it, the brand is gas operated. You have a gas tube here. When you fire, some of the propellant gas is tapped off. That works the mechanism of it. So it's gas operated. Um, it, it fires about five, six hundred rounds a minute, depending on the gas setting. In terms of feed, it has a top-mounted box magazine. Magazine release here. That just comes straight off. You can see the magazines there. Quite a strong curve to the magazine because 303 is a rim round. It goes onto the top, locked it back. Um, the unlike the water water cooled Vickers gun, the Bren gun is air cooled. However, it has a useful trick with it. It has a quick change barrel. The gun has fired about 300 rounds at the rapid rate, which is about 120 rounds a minute. This barrel will be red hot. The number two then flicks up this catch, uses the, the carrying handle to rotate the hot barrel off the gun, puts it aside to cool, picks up the spare barrel, slots it onto the gun, and you are good to go. A well-trained crew can get that barrel change done in about six to eight seconds, so the gun can just keep firing. Um, in terms of how the gun works tactically, this does actually, when you adopt the brand, you do see quite a notable change in a British infantry platoon. With the Lewis gun, each platoon had four sections, three rifle sections and a Lewis section, and that was a dedicated machine gun section. When you adopt the Bren, you change to a pattern of your platoon having three identical sections, each with a light machine gun in the section. So you would have your 10-man section, you would have a rifle group, which would have the section commander, typically a corporal, with a Sten gun, or if he's a very lucky boy, a Thompson. Um, you would then have six riflemen with Lee Enfield. Each of those riflemen would also be carrying two magazines section of red. So the big view of, um, I'm not actually doing Barbara Windsor here, I'm actually showing the universal patches on the 37 pattern webbing. Those big chest magazine patches are actually designed to be able to accommodate Bren gun magazines as well as rifle ammunition and grenades. So seven man rifle group, you've then got a three man Bren group. You have the stick. The 2IC of the section, typically a Lance Corporal, will lead the gun group with a Lee Enfield. You'll then have the number one Bren gun with the Bren, and you'll have the number two who has a Lee Enfield, plus you'll have the spare barrel carrier for the Bren. Each of those men will have four magazines for the Bren, giving a total of 25 mags for the Bren carried within the section, plus another 250 rounds in the platoon truck. And what you'll then do is the rifle group and the Bren group will alternate firing boots. Normally, you're firing the Bren off its bipod here. You get one tripod per platoon, which allows you to set up either one of these sections guns on fixed lines for sustained fire, or as you'll see it here, to set it up on an anti-aircraft mount. You're carrying the magazines in the 12 magazine carriers. You'll see you have three of those per section, or you'll see them in armoured vehicles. Um, we'll talk later about the 7.62 Bren. Thank you very much. I hereby give evidence that James constitutes a better audience than my talk about the Bren gun, but a pair of a different. Thank you very much.